Good morning, everybody. Uh, Pastor John here. Uh, I want to say Happy Father's Day. Today is the message for Sunday, uh, June 21st, and I, and I just want to say thank, thank you for joining us this morning, and also, again, a, a Happy Father's Day to all of our fathers who are out there. Um, and today, we are going to be talking a little bit about fathers. So what is a dad's job? I mean, they do have one. You know that, right? Uh, they actually have lots of them, uh, according to Scripture. And we're not going to go into all of them, but Scripture does make it pretty clear that God did design men and, diff and women to be different. Like, they're not supposed to do... Uh, all of the same things. Now, before you get all weird on me and start thinking I'm talking about uh, some sort of inequality, I'm not. So just take a deep breath. Um, I'm not saying that <clears throat> women can't do things or that men are supposed to only do certain things. Uh, and I'm certainly not saying that uh, that means that there's some supposed to be some sort of difference in the chores that they do, like men do certain chores and women do certain chores around the house. I'm not saying that at all. Uh, so just take a deep breath and stick with me. What I'm saying is that when God put the family uh, structure in order, that he designed the members of the family to have different roles and to do different things. And <clears throat> when we're talk this morning as we get into the message, uh, I want us to focus not on chores and roles and responsibilities in that regard. What I'm hoping that you'll do is join me as we look at Dad's role uh, from a scriptural perspective as it relates to spiritual leadership in the home. Uh, if you've got your Bibles, uh, jump with me over to Joshua uh, chapter 24. And this is a passage that a lot of people are familiar with, and I'm going to be starting in verse 14. So Joshua 24, uh, 14 says, So fear the Lord, and serve him wholeheartedly. Put away forever the idols your ancestors worshipped when they lived beyond the Euphrates River and in Egypt. Serve the Lord alone. But if you refuse to serve the Lord, then choose today whom you will serve. Would you prefer the gods your ancestors served beyond the Euphrates? Or will it be the gods of the Amorites in whose land you live now? But as for me and my family, we will serve the Lord. So Joshua is making a very emphatic statement here regarding the faith of his family. And he does this as part of an address. And if you read this whole passage of Scripture, if you read this uh, in context, then you'll see that this address that he's giving is actually intended to be a nationwide challenge to serve the Lord. He is absolutely uh, talking about a national faith and morality. But right in the middle of it, he gives this challenge to the nation uh, and to serve God. And he makes a very definitive statement. Listen to it again. He said, but as for me and my family, we will serve the Lord. Now, his statement is very bold when he says that as for me and my family, we will serve the Lord. But actually, statistics are kind of on his side. Uh in our present day society, and I'm, I'm talking internationally, uh, but this absolutely applies to the nation we're living in. It applies to the community that you're living in, give or take just a little bit on these statistics. But according to the information that we have, if a child has no parental guidance to serve the Lord, if they're completely left to find faith on their own, uh, and that faith being in Jesus Christ, that only about 1 in 50 children will choose to serve the Lord. Isn't that incredible? Only 1 in 50. Um, but this clearly describes why we continue to see our nation become more and more secular. Now, I want you to listen to how fast things change when parents get involved. If a mom 
regularly attends church, and she is a devout believer, it completely changes this narrative. About 50 to 66 percent, so anywhere from half to two-thirds of children who are brought up in church because mom makes sure that they go to church and that she knows, or excuse me, and she ensures that they know who the Lord is and, and why they should put their trust in him, that uh, about half to two-thirds of those children will continue to serve God into adulthood. And that's if their mom is a devout believer. But if dad's a devout believer, if he shows strong leadership, if he shows what a good example of being a Christian is supposed to be, then it becomes even more. It is anywhere from two-thirds to three-quarters. In fact, the minimum number in any research done was 66%, two-thirds. And most placed it actually over 75%. Dads, listen to me. You are making a huge difference. Now, I want to revisit a couple of statistics from last week. You'll remember that we learned that 84% of black children in the USA are considered fatherless. Uh, and that 38% of the families in Pacific County consist of a single parent home and that the vast majority of those it was the father who was absent from the home listen to me church whether you're here in pacific county or whether you're anywhere in our nation if you're listening to this right now there's a need there's a need that needs to be met and it's staring us in the face now we have to decide what we're going to do about it what are we as believers going to do about this problem where we have so many children who are growing up without guidance and without structure and without leadership that shows them that Jesus is the way. So <clears throat> last week I offered you some suggestions, and I want you to revisit those this week on how you can be spending time with, uh, with children who are in your community. Think real quick. What skills do you have? Uh, what talents do you have? What abilities do you have? What resources do you have that you could be using right now uh, to see a young man or a young woman come to faith in Christ because of the relationship that they share with you? Is it hunting, fishing, farming, the work that you do on a day to day basis? What about clamming or beach combing? What about doing art? I mean, you tell me, what are your abilities? Because those are the talents that Jesus gave you, and he expects you to use them. And that includes seeing children who are without guidance come to an understanding of who Christ is. And it's all based on relationship. Guys, we've talked about this so many times. People don't care what you have to say until they know that you care about them. And so it's an opportunity for you to really care for these kids and spend time with them, do things with them, so that they can better know who Jesus is to them, and they learn that through your example. Guys, don't just give this lip service. Please look at what you can do, and then begin inviting people to come and develop relationships so that you can spend time with them and absolutely do exactly what I'm talking about here and become, in a way, a mentor to bring them to faith in Christ. And I'm, I'm telling you guys, this is important. I'm not just asking you to take a look at this and consider it. I want you to cre get creative, and I want you to do it. <clears throat> and I'm not just talking to the dads right now either. There are absolutely ladies who could be doing this with the resources that you have available to you. So take a step back. Build those relationships. And then see... How you can incorporate other people into the things that you enjoy. Build the relationship. Trust takes time. Understand that. But bring these people that you care about into a place where they can get to know Jesus. Not because you're preaching to them, but because you're living out an example every day in your life. And now I would encourage you to expand that.
Don't just think about the kids. Think about their families. Bring these people into your home. And that brings us to our final point for this morning. And it's one that I don't think I can emphasize enough. Let's look at Joshua's words again. So fear the Lord and serve him wholeheartedly. Put away forever the idols your ancestors worshipped when they lived beyond the Euphrates River and in Egypt. Serve the Lord alone. But if you refuse to serve the Lord, then choose today whom you will serve. Would you prefer the gods your ancestors served beyond the Euphrates? Or will it be the gods of the Amorites in whose land you live now? But as for me and my family, we will serve the Lord. What is your home like? What is your home life like? Is your home a place where love reigns? Can your home be described as a place where you and your family wholeheartedly serve the Lord? Joshua said, as for me and my family, we will serve the Lord. And he says to do so wholeheartedly. Listen to me. If you cannot definitively say that that statement is true, then you have got to get your house in order. That's where this starts. It's very much like the example that Jesus gave. To get the plank out of your own eye before you go after the speck in your brother's eye. You have got to get your house right before you can be a leader to anyone else. But listen to me. Once your house is in order, or if your house is in order, then this is a place where love reigns. And it's a place that people should absolutely be welcomed so that they have an understanding of what right looks like. <clears throat> Bring people in. Let them see what living a life of Christian faith is supposed to be. Let them see what love looks like. Let them see what it sounds like. Your home should be an extension of the church. Is your home a place of worship? If it's not, it should be. Is your home a place of prayer? If it's not, it should be. But if it is those things then you absolutely should be incorporating people from outside of your home into your home so that they can experience the love of Christ. Now listen to me, it's not the showboat. It's not to say, hey, look how much better everything is over here and you don't have all this stuff. So, nitty nitty boo boo. That's not what this is supposed to be about. No, the whole point of this is so that you are providing an environment where the Holy Spirit is glorified and Christ is lifted up. And if that's the case, then the Holy Spirit will draw men and women, boys and girls, to Christ through the life that you are living. It's just the example that you set. You don't have to preach to them. You just have to live a life of love. And dads, that's your number one job. Your job is to lead your family into the presence of Christ every day. Parents, moms, and dads. Set the example for your children. Show them what right looks like. Show them what serving the Lord wholeheartedly looks like. And the children, you have a job too. To obey your parents because you belong to the Lord. For this is the right thing to do. I read that somewhere really important, I think. Oh yeah, Ephesians 6, one. And then guys, once your home is that extension of the church... Step two is to invite people in. Honor Jesus, glorify him, and let the Holy Spirit continue to draw your friends and your neighbors to Jesus. Now, I know a lot of people have been really upset lately because we haven't been able to meet as a church like we used to. In truth, that really shouldn't have bothered you all that much. Because although we do want to meet and we do want to worship together corporately, and I believe that's an important part of worship, your home should have already been an extension of the church. Worship should be second nature in your home. No, it should be first nature in your home. Worship should be the way of life in your home. And that means living out a life in obedience to God. 
I'm not telling you to have Bible studies in your home. That's not a bad thing. It's a good thing to have a Bible study in your home. What I'm encouraging you to do is invite the people that you care about, your neighbors, your friends who don't know the Lord, kids that you care about and you know you, you have a chance to meet a real need. 38%, 38% of the families in Pacific County have a parent missing. And you could be vital in one of those kids coming to know the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ, hearing the gospel for the very first time because you're living it out right in front of them. This isn't about a Bible study. It's about living a life that glorifies the Lord right in your very own home. That's what I'm encouraging you to do. Set an example of what Christian living is supposed to look like and then live it out in the world around you. Let your home be your base of operations. Let your church be a place where you come and get restored and refilled. But let your home be the place where you serve the Lord every day. <clears throat> well, thank you for joining me this morning. I love you guys. I'll see you next week.